We are about to catch some significant flooding across the country. Here is the spring flooding outlook. Hits the west, hits the Mississippi, the upper Midwest, down to the south. Let's break it down for you. If you're curious about that historic snowpack and the river levels as they'll be changing over the coming weeks, the reservoirs, how much will we fill up Lake Mead, Lake Powell? What about the San Joaquin Valley? What's going to happen there? We've got that information coming your way throughout this video. Let's start off with the flooding risk. This spring season, approximately 146 million people are at risk for flooding in their communities. Nearly 6.4 million at risk for moderate flooding. 1.4 million at risk for major flooding. A lot of folks going to have to deal with flooding over the coming weeks. What's happening here? We have very saturated ground across the American West. Utah, parts of Arizona, Colorado, Nevada, California. Super soggy ground. That's going to aid in the runoff. Same for the upper Midwest. Very soggy soil there. And that's going to contribute to the flooding risk as well. It's a historic snow season previous video talked about that. In the western United States, the total snow cover for this year is right here. Currently, the total snow cover across the west is historically high, much above the normal, and it's at a maximum. So we've got a lot of snow across the west to melt. What's happening now and over the next couple of weeks is shown here for Nevada and California. That point, which we have a lot of them here, are in the blues. That's extremely above a normal water year volume to try to handle. Northern California, Southern Oregon, it tapers off to an average or below average. But for a lot of the reservoirs, a lot of that water volume is going to be historically high throughout California and parts of Nevada. Let's just take an example here of what this means for the San Joaquin Valley. Just one example. But as you look at the water year so far right here, the forecast projections go way, way up here to the record high of 1983. So for the San Joaquin Valley, we're looking at a historically high volume of water, historically high runoff, and it's going to rival that of 1983. That's one example. But that's why we have this highlighted here, the spring flooding outlook. That's a moderate risk with some embedded major risks, and that's from Sacramento all the way down to Bakersfield. So watching out for that valley and the surrounding areas will also have some flooding to contend with as well. Saturated ground, lots of snow to melt, and this does not consider additional rain or snow on the way. Let's shift toward the Colorado River. This is where the current reservoirs are sitting. Most of them very, very empty. Lake Powell, Lake Mead is discussed previously, historically low. From a storage standpoint, there's a lot of water that can be held by the system. Again, historically low now, record snow season, we can start to increase those reservoirs. Or will we? Here's a look at the point map, kind of like the California one, but this is talking about the, the forecast of where we may see some flooding. So we're going to look at areas with the red dot here. That would represent um, a high likelihood of seeing at least some flooding. And that happens in parts of Colorado, northwestern Colorado, a couple of stations here outside of Salt Lake, and up to the north, Idaho and Wyoming. Let's see these individual points, how historic this may be. I'm not going to dissect everything on here. There's too much information to do that. But the point is, for the Gunnison River Basin, which is in Colorado, these blue ticks that happen out here, if those blue ticks fall within this color bar, that represents probabilities of having a historically high amount of water during runoff. Uh, the slate near Crested Butte is one. East near Almont is another example. Down here we have Paonia Reservoir, another example where we may have at least the probability of having a historically high amount of water. What about the Yampa Steamboat Resort? Historic year for snow at the ski area. That's part of the Yampa. Where could we see historically high amounts of water or potential flooding along the Yampa? Elk River near Milner may see some flooding. Uh, here's another one. Near Meeker, we have a lot of these locations, the Gunnison, the Yampa, that may see flooding with these historically high runoffs. Not just Colorado, but Utah as well. Provo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Nearly all of these points along that river system have a historically high forecast in place for the amount of water to flow through. It's not just that Provo system, the Duchesne, another one where a lot of these points along that river system will be historically high, at least based probabilistically on how much snow we have upstream to flow through these places. Go back to what I just said about Lake Mead, Lake Powell. They're historically low. 
they can hold a lot of water. So yes, upstream there may be some flooding concerns, but once you look at Lake Mead or Powell, this is a projection for the rest of the year and early next for what the level may be. Most probable is blue, and then kind of the lowest end probabilities is gonna be the yellow. So let's just take sake of argument. Let's take this most uh, extreme amount of water. Let's say we climb up here as we go from April into May. We're gonna see things rapidly climb as we melt snow, bring that water into the reservoir. So now we're finally kind of up toward about 3,590 feet, the elevation of the water above sea level. We're gonna see things increasing from, let's say roughly 3,520 up to 3,590. So that's gonna be a 70 foot increase, possibly for Lake Powell with the most extreme case. 70 feet, that's a lot of water. That's a lot of elevation gain there. And it tapers off as we go into early next year. So here's April 20 of 24. It tapers back down, still higher than it is now. And then we may see another surge going into late next year, next year's snowpack. What about Lake Mead? You'd think all the water upstream would continue to flow down. A lot of it's gonna be held in Lake Powell. So for Lake Mead, let's go through the end of the year, which is right here, end of the year, December, 2023. Uh, and then we can go into uh, next year's projections as well. But where we sit right now, let's take that maximum case, maximum probability case. There is a slight increase in the elevation there for Lake Mead. It's not even 20 feet though. The most probable case has Mead dropping down lower than it is now and staying lower than it is now as we go through the next couple of years. That's just a testament to how low it is already and how much water it's gonna to take to theoretically fill it back up. There's a lot of politics at play. Too much to get into the weeds with, but that's the latest projection for the next year to two years for Lake Mead. Historically low numbers do continue. What about the spring flooding outlook here? Well, from Idaho down into Utah and Colorado, we talked about it. There will be areas of flooding, but by and large, not nearly the case that we'll have in California or Nevada and not near the case that we're gonna have for the Mississippi River system and the Missouri River. So let's talk about that now. Point map here that shows the gauges and where we may see some flooding. We're seeing some flooding around Minneapolis and St. Paul already. There are some sections here in Michigan, but all of these points here are starting to show gauges where there's at least minor flooding today. And the outlook does continue because we have all this snow across the Northern Plains, the upper Midwest up into Wisconsin, the Great Lakes region, we still have some points here with more than two feet of snow on the ground. It means that snow's gotta go somewhere. The ground's frozen, so it's not going down into the ground. It's gonna flow. That's why we're having issues. St. Paul declares local flood emergency to prepare for anticipated spring flooding. So they're already gearing up for it around St. Paul. So we melt that snow off rapidly. It's gotta go somewhere. It's gonna flood areas like Minneapolis, St. Paul, all the way down the Mississippi, all the way down to the south, almost to Quincy and Hannibal with major risks for flooding. And then the red areas you see here in the Dakotas, parts of Minnesota, even sections of Missouri and Illinois on down to the south, those all have the risk for moderate flooding, much higher than the flooding conditions we already have today. And then the broad area for at least some flooding. So we've broken down the California floods by comparison, lesser risks there for the Colorado system and then off to the east for the Missouri and the Mississippi systems. Uh, the additional rain or snow that may on the, be on the way hasn't been factored into this yet. How rapidly temperatures warm, that's another factor that we'll have to consider. It's gonna be a long haul here. We got a lot of snow to melt additional rain and snow on the way. A lot of details about the historic snowfall in this last video and how it's going to contribute, obviously will, to the Colorado River system.